In today's example, we will be setting up communication between PC1 and PC2. As you can see, this lab consists of a few elements. Um, so here we have a switching environment where this PC1 plugs into, and this is the access port. And then from this switch, we have a trunk interface towards the FGT firewall. And then from here, it's just a normal um, access interface towards a router. And then obviously another directly connected interface between the router and the PC2. So this router will obviously do the routing between PC2 and the 40 gate. So the default gateway for this PC will exist on the router. And then uh, for PC1, will just be layer 2 through the switch with the gateway on the 40 gate. So the aim of this session is just to show you how to set up a VLAN interface on a 40 gate through a switching environment. You know, if, if you have a switch connected to your firewall, and then obviously how to add some static routes, you know, to a remote network. So that way, we'll have a setup communication between PC1 and PC2, and then we'll also just do some basic uh, security policy to enable, you know, communication between these two uh, PCs. All right, so first of all, I'm just going to take you quickly through these elements, you know, the router, PC2, and then PC1 as well, and then the switch, and then from there on, we will move to the 40 gate. Okay, so let's start with PC1. All right, so this is PC1. So if you look at the uh, NIC configuration, PC1 has been configured with IP address 192.168.100.10/24 gateway 100.1. So as I said, for PC1, the gateway will exist on the 40 gate. Yeah, so it's just layer two through the switch. Let's quickly go to the switch and see what is configured on the switch. All right. So if we do a show configuration VLANs. All right. So I've configured VLAN 10, as you can see. And then show configuration interface XC001. That's the interface towards the uh, PC, towards PC1. So as you can see, it's an access interface tagged with VLAN 10. And if then if we do the, show, the same command for interface XC0, as you can see, that's trunk VLAN 10. Let's see if there's any MAC addresses being learned. So currently we are learning a MAC address on interface one. Okay, so nothing too complex, just a single VLAN access port for VLAN 10, trunk port for VLAN 10 towards the 40 gate. Let's go to the router. All right, so here we have uh, the router, the show configuration interfaces, GE000. All right, so that's the interface towards the 40 gate firewall. So as you can see, this interface is configured with 192.168.2.2 slash 30. So that means that the 40 gate will be configured with 2.1. Let's look at the interface towards uh, PC2. All right, 192.168.1.1 slash 24. So that is a default gateway, exists on the router for PC2. Let's do a show ARP, let's see if we can see anything. So as you can see, here we can already see 192.168.1.10 out, you know, learn, learning that IP address on interface one. Okay, so as you have seen earlier in the lab, the IP is already configured on the PCs. Let's just do a show route. Okay, so as you can see, here, I have a default route on the router for the next hop of 2.1 out interface zero. And then obviously directly connected to network towards PC2. So the routing looks good on the router. Now let's go to the 40 gate. All right, so as you can see, this is uh, still a newly uh, spun up VM. So uh, we'll be configuring all the basic requirements to get this communication working on this um, on this 40 game. So let's start with port one. All right, so port one is towards PC2. Let's configure that. Right. Manual, so this should be 192.168.2.1 slash 24, just leave all the other defaults. All right, and then for port two, which is layer two all the way to PC one. So the gateway for this will be on port two, but remember it will be a VLAN interface. So we need to configure it accordingly. That's a physical interface, but like I said, we need a VLAN interface. So we go create new, it's an interface. And we want to use a VLAN interface, which is on port two. And we want to use VLAN 10. Let's just give it a name. Now let's give it a IP address. 192.168.100.1 slash 24. We're going to enable ping and we say okay. All right, so now we have configured the IP address on the respective interfaces. Let's see if we can at least see our ARP address on these uh, interfaces. All right, so that's only on a management interface. So let's see if we can do a ping.
Okay, so let's start it connected. On port one. All right, so I'm not getting that op address towards the router. So let's see why that is happening. Yeah, my mistake. Let me fix that quickly. I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, okay. There you go. Let's try this again. Okay, cool. Get system ARP. Now we have ARP address towards our uh, router. 2.2. .2. We're learning the ARP, so we know, uh, you know on the link layer that is working fine. All right, so uh, let's uh, go to the next step. What we want to do now is we want to create a security policy so that we can, uh, you know, obviously complete that. Uh, you know the communication between them. So what I'm going to do, I'm just first going to create just any any policy. So I'm creating an outside zone, port one. All right, so now I've got two zones. I've got an inside, land side facing interface, and then I've got the outside, which is in this scenario, it's going to be external. Okay, and my policies is going to be zone specific, so it will be from zone inside to zone outside, and a reverse policy for you know for the communication between the two. Um, like I said, you can use interfaces as well in your policies. You can just say from that interface to that interface. So at the end of the day, it's up to you how you want to use it. Um, just keep one thing in mind. So if you're using if you're referencing zones in your policy then it means that anytime you can remove and attach new interfaces to a zone without worrying about you know the, the interfaces being referenced in the policies so it makes you know that part a bit easier so it depends on what you want to do at the end of the day so you can use interface specific policies or in your policies you can use your interfaces as direction or you can use your zones as direction Right, so this is anything from going any sessions initiated from inside to outside. So I'm, as I said, I'm just going to do any any or all, all policy for this. All services, no net. So okay. All right, so that's the one direction. Now I want to create the reverse di direction. So any sessions initiated from outside or PC2 towards PC1 will match this policy. No net. All right, so now we have, now we have the basic policies configured that we require for communication between these two. Uh, computers. All right, so let's quickly just have a look again. Okay, so we've configured that VLAN interface, VLAN 10, and then as you have seen, we have checked that we are learning the ARPANET interface, and we've also done a ping towards that PC, so it means that the communication portion is working fine. Okay, and then we've also checked that we have a ARP that we're learning towards router 1, and so, and we also initiated ping, so it means that we can communicate know externally as well or towards you know the right side and we can communicate towards the left side so let's see what happens if i try to send a ping from this pc to that pc all right so this is pc1 so ping to 192.168.1.10 all right destination net unreachable so let's see what's going on here All right, let's see what we see here. So we have from the source to that destination, sending a ping request and we're not receiving anything back. Okay. So let's do a capture on port one. Let's sort of go to the router on port zero. Let's see if we are receiving anything from this 40 gate. No, we're not receiving anything. All right, so let's quickly see why this is not working. So let's stop. That. So okay, so the first thing we want to look at is let's just make sure that the routing is fine. Okay, so if we go to the 48, okay, get router info. 
routing table, let's do it all, let's see. All right, so as you can see, there is no root towards 168 1.10. So let's quickly go and add that root, go to network, static roots, new. All right, so in this scenario, we can either create a default root, just send everything to your router one, or you can cr create a specific root. But let's just create a specific root. Okay, 192, 168, 1.0, slash 24. What would be my next hop for this network? So my next hop would be router one. And what does that interface? It is 192.168.2.2, out port one. So, okay. Now, so let's see if we have that in there now. All right, so we have a static 192.168.1.0 slash 24 for anything in that network via port one, next hop 2.2, get system. Arp, there is my next hop. I'm learning my next hop, out port one, and that is towards router. All right, so let's, uh, I think that, let's run that ping again. I think it's still running. Okay, so let's see what we see on Wireshark now. Same interface. So what are we seeing? So let's quickly check. So we have that one, it's sending a request, and then we receive a reply. So if we go to PC1, there we can see we are seeing that reply. Okay, so it means that the routing is now fully functional between you know PC1 and PC2. So let's send send that ping quickly. Let's do this. Let's go to. So remember that ping is initiated from PC1 towards PC2, so it's from inside to outside. So if we go we say disable what will happen let's check all right so as you can see that ping has stopped so what will happen if we initiate a ping from pc2 towards pc1 let's see all right so here we have pc1 oh, sorry pc2 so let's initiate that ping cmd we say ping to 192.168.100.10 all right, so as you can see, the ping is working still. So remember, the policies are based on initiator and responder, that direction. This is why the ping from 1.10 can get to 100.10, but not the other way around. So let's go and enable this again. Now, if we go back to PC1, ping is working. And here is some session information you can see as well. So it shows you the source, you know, the operating system, the destination, and the type of pro you know, the protocol that's running through it. Okay. So you can use this as well to see, you know, real time data about the session information. All right. So let's just quickly do another recap. So if you look at the lab, as I said, we have a we have PC one with the gateway on, you know, on port two. And then we also have PC2, which is, you know, remote, which is a PC on a remote network via next top router, All right? So in this lab, we have, uh, I've shown you how to establish, you know, basic communication between these two, how to configure a VLAN interface, how to configure a normal interface, how to configure a basic policy, and how to configure a static root to get to where your packet needs to go. And that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hope to see you in the next one.